Welcome to It's a Crime, I'm Linda, and today I'm gonna talk more about the Gannon Stoke case. Gannon's mom, Landon, has just done a interview, and there is updates also in the search, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit more, again, about the timeline from a different perspective. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, and hit the like button. With that being said, let's get into it. So in the latest interview with Landon Hyatt, Gannon's mom, she says with despair and tears in her eyes. She says, I don't know how to go forward without him. She also says, I need my boy more than air. It was an absolute heartbreaking video. I had to choke back tears the whole time. I'm sure you feel the same way. In the interview, she also says that she keeps replaying videos of Gannon saying, mommy, I love you. And that's what keeps her going. She also said, I need my boy more than air more than life. And she made it pretty clear when she said the only thing she can do as his mom is to get this message out and make sure that Gannon's story doesn't die. She said, and that my boy comes home. He needs to come home. And I agree, Gannon needs to come home. It's time. And she also takes a minute and says, and it's just strange that he just disappears. She said, nobody has a trace, nobody hears anything, nobody knows anything. And she said, that's not how it's supposed to work. She said, when she heard that he ran away, she said, I knew that was the first sign that is not my boy. She goes, no, mm -mm, no, 100% without a shadow of a doubt, my boy would not run away. And she said she wants hope. She says, until he's found, even if it takes 20 years, she says, I still want his face plastered everywhere. Well, Landon, Hyatt, as long as I can help it, you get that wish. Now, according to the searches, reporter Ashley Franco said on Twitter yesterday that they confirmed that they do not have any active searches today. They did have a few guys on foot earlier this morning in the Larkspur area as part of the investigation side of the case. And then this morning, which is Friday, February 21st, it was just announced on the EPC Sheriff's Twitter this morning that all search efforts around Highway 105 have been suspended. So now I want to take you back to the Sunday night before his disappearance on January 26 and walk you through some insights. So I'm rolling up my sleeves. Let's get into it. Now, most of you heard the video from Gannon and Tisha, the one that she accidentally videoed and leaked. And in it, Tisha asks, did you do it on purpose? And Gannon was crying in it. And there were also reports saying that he said he was bleeding at the very end of this clip. Now, what I wanna point out is something different in this video. I'm not gonna go into all that, but I do wanna point out the time. There's a news report going on in the background about Kobe Bryant, which we also heard that Tisha was crying on that Sunday about Kobe. Now in her accidental video, there was a news report in the background and people who live in the area or surrounding that said the news was around 10 to 11 p.m. around that time. And it got me thinking it's a Sunday night which is a school night, there's school the next day. So that's pretty late to be up, right? And then I remembered her text, which was talking about, uh, it said, do freak out instead of don't freak out. It said, do freak out. And it was talking about the candle incident. And I believe that was about 10.54 PM. I'll put the screenshot right here of the text. So it was in and around that area. Things went down between 10 and 11. She texts the message and then I wonder did Tisha know that Gannon wasn't going to school the very next day? She stated on a text on Tuesday morning that he had a stomach ache on Monday morning so why up so late between 10 and 11? What time is his normal bedtime? Lena was also in that video so we know she was up and Tisha even flicked the light on right and we could hear her talking. That's pretty late to be up for a school night. Okay, now let's get to Monday morning. Lena goes to school. According to the times of the school, 
the schools from 7.45 until 3.05 p.m. Now, according to a website that I was on, it shows the bus stops for the school, and her bus stop should be at around 7.02 a.m. for pickup, and then at 3.08 p.m. for drop-off. And the bus stop is just around the corner to her house, according to the map. So does Tisha walk her there, I wonder, and back? Or does she walk alone because it's just around the corner? Now, before I get into the timeline from a different angle, I want to show you when they get into the vehicle at 10.15 a.m. Tisha walks out with her white hat. She has what looks like a backpack on and maybe carrying in her hand, it looks like it's either a purse or a bag. And then she gets in the truck. Now, why does Tisha need a backpack with her. If she's planning on taking Gannon to the doctor, according to her text, or run some errands like going to Petco. I find that a little bit strange. Maybe she always carries a backpack though. Now when Gannon walks out of the house and goes towards the truck, to me he looks like he's actually limping. I was looking at the gate and as he's walking, he looks like he's favoring his right leg. That's what I first noticed. And I can do a separate video of all the little isms that I see if you want or if you'd like to see that. And if you do, just put a heck yeah driveway video in the comments below so I know that you want me to do that. But for now, I just wanted to point out some of these things that I've seen. And with the limp, I naturally wonder, was this from the cut that she said that happened on Saturday night? Because she said Gannon cut his foot in the garage or was this from something that happened on the Sunday night? Or did something happen on the Monday morning? We don't know. But it does coincide with the neighbor saying that he looks a little sluggish. So I don't know, maybe he was walking because he had a stomach ache. Plus, he looks like he's limping with his right leg, in my opinion. I also just want to point out that there was no snow that day in that video. Okay, so here are my thoughts about her pattern that day. She seems to be on a schedule. She leaves the house at 10.15 a.m. She gets on camera at 11 a.m. at Petco. And then she makes sure she's back at the Petco at 1 p.m. Everything is on the hour, on the, the dot. And in one of my videos, I'll put it right here, I talk about how I believe she was going north and had an hour to go north and an hour to come back outside of the city. And that was two days before they actually started the search. And it's towards the end of the video as well, just so you know. So I'll put the link here and then you can go and look. Now it takes a half an hour to get to the Petco, which is the north part of Colorado Springs on North Nevada. Now it takes them around four minutes to get loaded into the car. So they come out at 10.15, takes about four minutes I counted and then they leave. So they would get to Petco at around 10.50 and she's checking out right at 11 a.m. according to a Petco employee. Now she then has one hour to go north out of town and one hour to come back because she has to be back on camera at 1 p.m. right? So 11 to noon, noon to 1. So I'm gonna put a map up of where she could go by herself in that hour and do what she needs to do or whatever she's planning or whatever went down. Now my guess is, like I said, she gives herself until noon and then comes back so she could be at Petco by 1 p.m. So it's, everything seems very methodic. So she gets home at 2.15 p.m. as shown in the surveillance video. Since it's only a half an hour to come from Petco to her house, the question is what'd she do from 1 p.m. to 1.45 p.m., right? Where did she go? Or what errands did she have to do? And did she actually go to the doctor with Gannon? I know people are gonna say, no, she called in, but on Tuesday morning, that next day he went missing, there was a text from her that said to somebody else, they're talking about Gannon being missing, and she said, that he had a stomach ache and he had to go see the doctor. Well, what time was that at? She didn't say that he didn't end up going to the doctor. She said that he had a stomach ache and had to go see the doctor. So the question is, where did you go and what did the doctor say? And when I did my little look at the 
shopping plaza where the Petco was. There's tons of different places, but there wasn't a doctor's office. There was a dentist office and also a chiropractor. So it doesn't mean that she didn't go somewhere, but it wasn't in that square. And also, if she did go to a family doctor, I don't know how it works in the States, but if she did go to a family doctor, typically those are nearby. When they take patients, they'll take it from a certain radius, but I don't know how that works down there. So she gets home at 2.15 p.m. and here's another clip of the video of what I see right away. Now, when she opens the door, she swings it enough, with enough force that it actually bounces. So you can see her open the door. Maybe she pushed it with her foot because it looked like her hands were full, but she, she pushes it open and bounces it. And you can see it actually bouncing. Now to me, in my opinion, she seems mad. She flips open that door, kicks it open or pushes it open, however she did it and it bounces and then when she walks she's walking and i'll show you she kind of is walking with the lean like she's mad like she's on a mission kind of thing so she just seems like she's hunched forward and just you know giving her when she's walking it it's not a relaxed walk she's she almost goes forward like a diagonal in her walk and let's talk about the elephant in the room Gannon isn't there. Now people are saying, but there's a shadow. Tisha's saying, but Gannon is there. We just can't see him. The only problem with that is if he was there, then why did Al kick her out? Was it a misunderstanding? Tisha also mentions a selfie. And I'm gonna ask you this. Tell me in the comments below, when have you ever taken a selfie when you're mad? You're not gonna say, hey, Gannon, let's take a picture together while I'm super angry. She looks angry in my opinion. Now, I don't doubt there's a selfie. I'm pretty sure there's a selfie. I just don't think it's, in my opinion, I just don't think it's at that time. She probably took one earlier in that day. And I'm curious, did she send it to Al? Because she said, we always take selfies and send it to Al. Okay, did you send this selfie to Al? And did you tell him that he has a stomach ache and I'm gonna take him to the doctor? Now, she mentions there's a timestamp, right? Well, if you're devious, you can change the timestamp on the photo. But I'm sure the FBI can get the proper metadata. So, probably a selfie in the morning. Doubt it's the afternoon, but I really would love to know. And so if you did take that photo, did you send it to Al? And what time did you send it to him? 2.15? because by 3.30, Gannon's gone. Now, Lena would get off the bus at this point at 3.08 p.m., so just under an hour later. And like I said, I'm not sure if he, she walks by herself around the corner or if Tisha meets her to go up the street. Then, according to Tisha, Gannon leaves to a friend's house after 3.30 p.m. So technically, Lena would see Gannon after school, if she gets off at 3.08, it takes like a minute to go around the corner, two minutes. So by 3.10, and Gannon doesn't leave till 3.30, so they have about 20 minutes to see each other, right? And I wonder, did Lena also go play with friends or did she stay home? So now she claims after 3.30, Gannon goes to play with a friend, right? But she doesn't know which friend he went with. Now she gives a description of what he was wearing as per his missing poster. But there's a text saying that she's second guessing what he's wearing. She did see him all day on Monday and she took selfies. So why would she second guess herself? Now the only thing is on the missing poster, it said he was wearing blue jeans. But to me, by the look of it, in the video, he's wearing almost like track pants, it looks like. I know it's hard to see, but it doesn't look like blue jeans, right? If he did come home at the 2.15 time, then he could easily have changed his pants and her not know. So let's give her that benefit. So then I decided to strap on my imaginary Fitbit and take a little walk down Google on Mandon Drive. And what did I see? Hmm. 
at 6627 Mandon Drive, it looks like a ring camera. Now, please confirm with me if that looks like a ring camera to you because this is me guessing that it looks like a ring camera. It could be, it could not be. So tell me family, is this a ring camera in your opinion? Well, if it is a ring camera, then problem solved, right? Show Gannon walking in after 2.15 p.m. walking through the front door. No problem. But then I thought, or is this why the gate is coming up? Did he go through the gate? Because Tisha mentions on Saturday night that Gannon cuts his foot in the garage because Al likes woodworking and she bandaged his foot and he was good to go. And then she mentions that he keeps checking the gate. But I wonder, could he get into that gate on his own? Because it looks like it's to the left of the house. You can see the hinges on the gate. And she said he has a key to it because he is the man of the house since Al is away. So she said he kept checking. Now, I'm not much taller than Gannon and I have a heck of a time opening the side gate to my house, lock or no lock. In his poster, it says he's four foot nine. So if he was at that garage when he got hurt, he would be going to the gate from the outside. So was the gate open already? And, but he was checking on to see if it locked or was he just shaking it to check? But she said he kept going to the gate to check it. How would he check it if he's coming on the outside if it's locked? Because even if you have just a latch, it, it seems like it's locked anyways, right? So I'm curious how they actually open that gate from the outside. Because did, was there like a string? It looks like those slats are pretty close together. How is that? Or do you have to go over top and open it? And in my opinion, he's too short to do that. So is he climbing on something with a sore foot? Okay, so back to 330. Why would Gannon decide at the 3.30 or after 3.30 p.m. to run away? What happened? They were together all day. Supposedly, according to Tisha, he came home at 2.15. What happened in that hour then for him to want to go and run away, right? What happened? Something must have happened that day for him to want to run away. He gets home at 2.15 and then an hour later wants to go to a friend's but wants to run away. And I thought about that 11 years old to run away. I mean, where are you going to go? You're on foot, no vehicle, apparently no phone. Where are you going to run away? 11 year olds, 15, 16 teenager, you're more crafty, right? You can figure out quite a bit. 11, mm, not going to go far. Or you're probably going to be home by dinner because you're hungry. Seriously, like 11 year olds more like they're so easy going. They're so, you know, they're it's in the moment, right? It's like little kids, they're playing, they might get mad and then they're off playing again, right? So running away has to be pretty serious for him to want to run away because according to Landon, he's a very happy boy. Okay, so why does he want to run away? Also, his favorite movie, the Sonic movie, was coming out. There is no stopping a kid from seeing that movie. So that makes me curious, if he wanted to run away, what was the argument over? Did Landon get a text saying he's so angry that he wants to move away? Hmm. Because in Landon's interview, she adamantly states that without a shadow of a doubt, she's 100% sure that Gannon would not run away. And that's his mother. So then once the report goes in that he ran away, authorities would come and talk to her, right? I mean, wouldn't they say, hey, what happened? Okay, so he's going to be classified a runaway? There was no mention about any vehicles in the area, which she later alluded to that there was vehicles in the area and to be on the lookout in case he was taken. Unless maybe he was grounded or something and he decided to go out the side gate. But again, he was so close to his mom, texting all the time, giving jokes and whatnot, I'm sure if he wanted to run away, he'd be like, I want to run away from here. I'm so mad, blah, 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 right? So it begs the question, what's the argument about for him to want to run away? And then him not take a phone, not take a proper jacket, because according to the poster, he only left with a blue hoodie on. Now, 
I have more videos coming on Ganon. There's going to be a lot more. And I'm going to start looking closer at the search locations. I'll probably take a lot of time today and tomorrow and just really dig into some of this stuff just to see my own thoughts, my own opinions, maybe my spidey senses. And just to give you a little inside look as to what my thoughts are. Plus, I'll probably do a driveway video as well, just in what the little things that I see, and we can go from there. If you have some other thoughts, what you'd like me to do a video on regarding Ganon, then just please put it in the, the comments below. Now, let me know your questions. Let's have a chit chat about this below. And don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share, and don't forget to like. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.